Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be taking all the circle theorems we looked at last video and we'll be going through some examples so you actually know how to implement them. Leslie's back and she's going to be showing you how to do this. So we're going to do some examples using the circle theorems. The first one is a very standard diagram looking a bit like a bow tie. You're probably more used to seeing this theorem with a chord across the circle. So imagine a chord joining the points A and D. Now with that chord drawn, if you then imagine the line going from A to B to D, that traps the angle X. And going back to the point A, the line from A to C to D traps the 63 degrees. And using the theorem angles in the same segment, those two values are equal. Exactly the same for the other angle. Imagine it turned upside down, and this time imagine a chord from B to C. If you start at B, go to A, and then down to C, traps 18 degrees. Start from B to D and down to C, traps Y degrees. So the Y degrees is equal to 18 degrees. And in both cases, if they wanted a reason, you would just write angles in the same segment. Second example, again another very common situation. Imagine this time that you have a chord across the circle from A to B and that, that's the standard diagram for the angle at the center being twice the angle at the circumference. So start at A, go to O which is the center and back to B and you've trapped the angle M and then start at A, go to the circumference at C and down to B, you've trapped the angle 31 degrees so M is equal to 2 times 31 degrees or 62 degrees and if a reason is required the reason is that the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference Another very straightforward example, in here, as soon as you see a line going through the point O, you know you have a diameter, and invariably if you have a diameter, the theorem they're using is that the angle in the semicircle is a right angle, so the angle that's at, in the semicircle is the angle that goes from A to C to B, so the angle ACB is 90 degrees. As soon as you've got that, you have a big triangle, you have an angle of 90 degrees, an angle of 30 degrees, so the angle A is 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is 60 degrees. And again, if you need to give a reason, the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Just a little bit this harder this time, we have two angles to find. So if you look carefully at the diagram, once again, the line from A to D goes through the centre of the circle. So the line from A to D is a diameter. So the first theorem we're going to be using is that the angle in the semicircle is 90 degrees. And the angle in the semicircle is the one that goes from A to C to D that angle is 90 degrees. So in the triangle that goes from A to C to D, those three angles add up to 180 degrees. So the angle A is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 33 degrees, which is 57 degrees. The angle B, now if you have a careful look at the shape, which goes from A to B to C to D and back to A again, then we have a cyclic quadrilateral, a four-sided shape drawn inside the circle. And the theorem about cyclic quadrilaterals states that opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So the angles which are opposite to each other are the one from A to B to C, which is the B degrees, and 
The one opposite to that is the angle from A to D to C, which is 33 degrees. So the B is again equal to 180 minus 33 degrees, which is 147 degrees. So just getting slightly harder again, we are asked to find, first of all, the angle B, D, A. Slightly different labelling of the angle this time. So the angle from B to D to A, you start from B, you go to D, and then you go to A. So the angle B, D, A is the one I've marked on the diagram. And if you look at that angle, one side of the triangle that contains it is the diameter. It goes through the circle. So we're using the circle theorem. The angle in, the subcent in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So angle BDA is equal to 90 degrees. For the second angle, let's try and find the angle BAD. So the angle BAD, you start from the angle B, go along the line which joins it to A, then align the line which joins it to D. So BAD is the angle I have just shaded. Now again, this is the standard angles in the same segment. If you look from B to A to D, which is the angle that I have shaded, the chord that joins it is the chord from B to D. So go from B to C to D, that's another angle in the same segment. So the angle BAD is equal to 40 degrees. And then thirdly, we're going to try and find the angle BOD. Now, BOD isn't actually marked on there at the moment. Start from B and go to O, and then you have to draw the line in, which goes from O to D. This is quite a standard practice that you sometimes have to draw a line in to help you find an angle. And we want to find the angle from B to O to D. So again, we want to find the angle that I've just shaded. Now, have a look very carefully at the diagram. I'm just going to erase part of the diagram to help you see it better. So, if you look at the bit that's left, there you have the setup for the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. So, the chord is BD, the angle at the centre is BOD, the angle at the circumference is BCD, so the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference, means that BOD is 2 times 40 degrees, which is 80 degrees.